Hi XR developers! In today's video, we're going to look at a very important feature for all mixed reality games, which is the environmental occlusion. Environmental occlusion means that our virtual objects get occluded by either our hands or real physical or virtual objects. I'm going to show you in this video how to achieve this effect using different methods. First, I'm going to show you how to achieve this effect using different shaders, which we can use on any device. And then we're going to look at how to use the depth API, which is only available for the MetaQuest 3 at the moment. If you enjoyed this type of videos, please take a second to give a like or subscribe to this channel. And as always, you can find the source code for this project on my Patreon. If you have any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. The link is in the description. And now, let's get started with environmental occlusion and the new depth API from Meta. Like always, we make sure that the Meta XR SDK is installed and our project is set up correctly for playing our scene on the Meta Quest device. If you don't know how to do that, please check my Meta Quest setup video. When creating a mixed reality experience, we want to occlude virtual objects that are behind walls and furniture to create a way more immersive experience for the user. Let me first show you two ways on how you can solve this issue if you don't have a MetaQuest 3 with depth sensors. A quick solution would be to use shaders that we apply to our surfaces. So let's set up a quick scene with the Meta building blocks. We would like to include the OVR camera rig, a pass-through layer, and lastly, the room model building block. Additionally, I would like to add my ball spawner logic that we created together in a previous video about pass-through relighting. All it does is shooting a sphere into our scene when the trigger button is pressed. Now, for the first method, we create a new material and call it VR Occlusion. We want to select the built-in occlusion shader that Unity provides for us by going to VR, then Spatial Mapping, and then Occlusion. We then replace the material on the plane and the volume mesh of the OVR Scene Manager. We also apply a mesh collider so we can see the sphere bounce off our furniture. Lastly, let's add a simple cube to our scene so we can visualize the occlusion a little bit better. Let's give it a go. Fantastic guys, as you can see, we can shoot our spheres into the room and they are getting occluded by the furniture. However, you can see that the cube is not being properly occluded by our hand. To do that, we can simply add hand tracking to our OVR camera rig and then on each OVR mesh renderer as well as skinned mesh renderer, we apply the same occlusion material. Let's give this another test. As you can see now, our fingers occlude the cube when we hold them in front of it, but not when holding them behind it. Now, for the sake of completeness, this works exactly in the same way for the Mixed Reality Utility Kit. You can watch my video about it here. If we have the MRUK package installed and set up our scene, all we have to do is to open up our Effect Mesh game object and apply our material with the Occlusion Shader. Awesome, guys. Before we look at the Depth API, there is a second shader, and possibly even more, that we can use to achieve the same effect. The other shader we can use is called Selective Pass-Through, and can be found under Oculus. We need to adjust some properties to make our mesh render in front of our object, and can then give it a try. As you can see, this almost looks identical to the Occlusion shader, but in my opinion, the Occlusion shader was slightly more accurate. Finally, let's go over the basics of the Depth API which is currently only available with MetaQuest 3's depth sensors. Meta recommends that to build realistic mixed reality apps, both the Scene API and the Depth API capabilities should be used together to cover a broader set of use cases. To start, we make sure that we use Unity 2022 LTS or newer. Also, like shown before, we need to use the Meta XR SDK version 60 or later. We then look at the Oculus XR plugin inside the package manager. As you can see, I am currently using version 4.1.2. To use the Depth API, we need to update the version to an experimental version that we can simply install by using add package by name. Finally, we can install the Depth API package that contains all scripts and prefabs we need to get started. Additionally, we need to install the Depth API URP support package if our project is using the Universal Render Pipeline. You can find the links in the description. After the installation, we make sure that our project is still correctly set up by opening the project setup tool. We have to keep in mind that we need to use the Vulkan Graphics API in order to use the Depth API. 
On our OVR camera rig, we need to make sure that the scene support is set to required in order to request spatial data permission when we start our application for the first time. We then add the environment depth occlusion prefab from the depth API package to our scene. This contains the environment depth texture provider, as well as the environment depth occlusion controller, which we can just set to soft occlusion for now. Then I want to add a grabbable cube to my scene so I can visualize the occlusion better. We don't need any hand visuals this time, but we have to change the shader of our cube to the one provided to us by the depth API package from Meta. For this, select the material and go to Meta, then depth, then URP, and then occlusion lit. We also apply the same shader to our sphere prefab. So basically, now we need a shader on any object that we want to be occluded and not our surfaces anymore. So we apply either no material or a standard material to our effect mesh or OVR scene manager. Let's add back a pass-through layer with our building blocks to actually see our environment, and then we are ready to give the depth API a try. As you can see now, the object that contains the depth shader from Meta can now be accurately occluded by real-world objects without them needing to be modified by any special mesh or shader. This, in combination with the OVR Scene Manager or the Mixed Reality Utility Kit, enables a more coherent sense of reality for your users. Keep in mind that the Depth API is a new feature that exposes real-time, per eye, per frame, environment depth estimates to our app from the headset's point of view, which means it uses a lot of our GPU performance. Therefore, to conclude this video, let me show you some different occlusion modes and features to fit your application exactly to your needs. A minute ago, we saw that we can choose between hard and soft occlusion. Hard occlusion is cheaper to compute, but has a jagged edge and more visible temporal instability. Soft occlusion is visually more appealing, but requires more GPU. We can perfectly visualize this in the same scene by using the so-called per-object occlusion, which allows us to display different kinds of occlusion on different objects in the same scene. To make this work, let's duplicate our cube twice and position them next to each other. Then on our environment depth occlusion prefab, we want to get rid of the environment depth occlusion controller and instead add an environment depth enabler. Then on each cube where we want to show the occlusion, we add the occlusion controller script. Those scripts are custom scripts from the meta samples and I will include them in my project for all Patreon supporters or you can find them on the GitHub sample page. The link is in the description. We don't add the script to the first cube, select soft occlusion for the second and hard occlusion for the third. Let's press play and see how these different occlusion modes look like in action. I think for objects that are further away, we can set the occlusion to hard. Objects close by, like the cubes, arguably look better with soft occlusion. If you want to change the occlusion type during runtime, you can easily just get a reference to the environment depth occlusion controller and access the occlusion type enum, which can then be set to whatever type you want by calling the enable occlusion type method. Furthermore, the depth API allows us to enable or disable the occlusion on our hands from the wrist upwards. We can also change that in code during runtime by getting a reference to the environment depth texture provider and then call the remove hands method with either a true or false boolean. Now it is your turn to bring your mixed reality experiences to the next level with Meta's new depth API. I can't wait to see what you guys will build with it. All right, guys, and that's it. I hope you learned a lot today, and I hope you can see now how to bring your mixed reality experiences to the next level with Meta's Depth API. Please take a second to like and subscribe to this channel, subscribe to my Patreon, or join our growing XR developer community on Discord. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.